Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this presentation on ethics and environmental action. I'm honored to be included in this year's National Public Health Week activities, and I hope that this short video is useful for your own work. My name is Trisha Griffin, and I'm currently a PhD researcher studying ethics at Maastricht University in the Netherlands. I am from the United States originally, where I earned a Master of Public Health in 2021 and a Master of Bioethics in 2020 from Creighton University. In this video, I'm going to talk about the importance of ethics in environmental action and in community partnerships, and I'll be using the work I did for my MPH practicum uh, with the ASEER Foundation as the case study. So our theme today is uh, climate change and equity. This slide is from the CDC, and you can find this graphic and a lot more information at cdc.gov. But what's important to take note of in this slide is just how interconnected our health is to the environment. As global temperatures rise, heat waves become more frequent, which increases the risk of heat stroke. Warmer temperatures and changes in precipitation expand the geographic range of disease carrying insects like mosquitoes. Flooding from intense storms can lead to property damage, food scarcity, and water contamination, and on and on. Uh, these impacts hurt everyone, but not equally. People of color, indigenous communities, and those with lower incomes experience greater health harms despite being less responsible for the problem. To address social inequities and improve global health, we need to strengthen and empower these communities. Now that can mean working at the grass tops on investing things like clean energy or removing toxic materials from the environment, but it can also mean working at the grassroots level and supporting community-directed solutions. And that's the work I really wanna talk about today. One of these community-directed solutions comes in the form of working with indigenous communities. Many people don't know that indigenous peoples protect 80% of the Earth's biodiversity, uh, but their ancestral lands and their own community sovereignty are under constant threat from commercial interests. So this image shows damage and destruction caused by illegal mining operations in the Tambonpata region of the Peruvian Amazon. This uh, area, this, this large tract of forest figures prominently in the work of the Asir Foundation. Um, it is one of the most biologically diverse forests in the world. And it's also home to many indigenous communities who have tended to these lands for generations. The Asir Foundation wants to protect both the cultural and biological diversity of the Amazon. Their primary mission is to develop the next generation of conservation leaders. They do that by connecting indigenous holders of ecological knowledge with students and teachers from around the world. They have had a collaboration with the SEA Ha Nation in Peru for about 30 years now, and more recently with the Lenape Indian Tribe of Delaware. When I approached them about doing a practicum project, I didn't have a clear sense of what I might do, but their leadership was very clear, and they asked if I could work with them on an ethics policy that would help them navigate their growing collaborations with indigenous communities. They were acutely aware of past harms to indigenous communities caused by hundreds of years of colonialism, as well as the disproportionate burden that climate change uh, bears on these populations. Um, so not only did they not want to reproduce the harms of colonialism, they also wanted to be able to navigate their growing relationships with integrity. This was a good fit for me for a couple of reasons. First, my career interests are in professional and organizational ethics. Uh, with a specific focus on how people from different backgrounds can work together to make good decisions. And second, conservation science and partnerships with indigenous communities were both new to me. So this represented a rich opportunity for, to me, for me to learn. Okay, before I talk about the ethics policy, I wanna say something about ethics. What are we talking about when we talk about ethics? There are generally four ways that we can think about this. The first is just our personal choices. We ask questions like, what should I do? What shouldn't I do? And we get answers like, don't cheat, don't steal, don't lie, treat others the way you wanna be treated. The second way is a bit broader. Uh, and we start thinking about what it means to live a good life. What does a good life look like? Here we ask questions like, what is worth pursuing in terms of having a family or choosing a career? Uh, and it's worth keeping in mind that a good life for you may look very, very different from the good life for someone living in the Peruvian Amazon. And so that's where answering this question starts to get challenging. How do we create systems and structures that allow all of us uh, to pursue what a good life means to us, given that we all have different uh, wants and needs? The third way is membership ethics. And here we're concerned with what might be morally per permissible for members of a specific group like doctors or lawyers to do, but no one else. Um, 
This also applies to members of indigenous communities who may have specific moral expectations that you and I may not have because we're not members of those communities. And the final way we, uh, of thinking about ethics is philosophy. And this can be more academic in nature, but can still be quite helpful if we're asking ourselves like Aristotle might, what virtues do I need to cultivate to be a good person? How can I cultivate courage or excellence? Um, so what I want us to take from this is that we're all thinking about, when we're thinking about ethics, we're not thinking about just one thing. Um, but what all of these ways of thinking about ethics have in common is the ability to reflect on our choices, to think about the impacts our choices have or could have on ourselves and others. With that in mind, let's apply some of this ethics awareness to environmental action. Uh, these are some of the ways we can think about environmental action, uh, preservation, conservation, regeneration, and what the ASEER Foundation has taken to calling the first way. The first three approaches are really rooted in Western concepts of land management. So I'll pause on these three just for now um, to say that each of these are ethical in the right contexts, but under certain circumstances, pursuing these ends may actually be harmful. As one example, uh, during this project, I learned that a conservation organization once displaced an entire indigenous community from their ancestral lands in the name of protecting the ecosystem. In this context, preservation was not an ethical approach. The community had nowhere else to go, and so we're living in squalor on the side of a highway. So we need to know what we're aiming for and whether the action we want to take in pursuit of that aim is ethically justified in the context we're working in. The work of a seer uh, sits in the conservation and first way categories. A seer collaborates with indigenous communities who have tended to their lands for centuries. So the goal of conservation in which we sustain an ecosystem to support the community's needs is very appropriate here. And the ethics of the first way helps inform a seer as well. In speaking to members of indigenous communities, I learned about how they relate to the land as one of their relatives. So if their relatives are buried there, they become part of the land. And in turn, the land needs to, for example, experience children playing there, right? Uh, grandparents need to see their grandchildren play. So the people need to stay on the land for the land and the community to stay healthy. So you can see how these two categories work really well together in the context of a Sears work. Okay, so the process for developing the ethics policy was really mindfully chosen as a community based participatory approach and in this approach, the community itself sets the goals. So in this case, it was a seer in collaboration with the Sieha Nation and the Lenape Indian tribe of Delaware. My role was to conduct a series of interviews with a seer and with uh, both of those uh, indigenous nations. Uh, those interviews informed a survey which uh, further narrowed and identified the principles and values that were most important to these groups. Then I drafted the policy, which was rigorously and thoroughly reviewed by ASEER and by the SEHA and Lenape before it was advanced to the board. So ASEER, the SEHA, and the Lenape were all equals in this process, and they all needed to agree uh, that this was the right policy before advancing it to the board. The process started in January of 2021, and the policy was approved by the ASEER board in December of 2021. So here's a couple of examples of what's in the policy. Uh, this is a little wordy, so I won't read it to you, but of course you can pause the recording to read through these. As you can see, the community-based participatory methods are really woven throughout, where ASEER and uh, the indigenous communities are equals in these processes. Um, each principle is defined, and we're clear about how we translate the principles into practice. In the coming months, I'll be working with a seer on a series of blog posts that will unpack each element of the policy. So check in at seer.org if you want more information about this work. I want to end by acknowledging that I was born and raised on the ancestral lands of the Tongva and Serrano peoples in what is now called Chino, California. I acknowledge that the land I grew up on was stolen from these communities, as were the lives and culture of their people. I want to pay respects to their elders, past and present. I extend that respect to all the indigenous communities who live in the United States, or what many of these indigenous communities call Turtle Island. I encourage you to learn about the indigenous communities on whose lands you might be living and to acknowledge them as the traditional custodians. 
Thank you very much for your kind attention and please check in with seer.org to learn more about uh, conservation in practice. Thanks very much.